Hello, Sharif here. And uh, today we've got a lot. Um, we're going to be continuing our conversation around the values of our new society. Um, looking forward to um, sharing a bunch with you and seeing if I can do it within our half hour time frame. Um, and I have to keep reminding myself that means not trying to rush through it. Um, we can't afford to screw things up through our impatience, through our um, lack of um, care that although uh, things are, are in crisis right now, our answer to the crisis has to last us for a thousand years. Um, we can't just you know, start doing things to do them because we're afraid. We shouldn't be acting from our fear at all. So I said all that to calm me down, to slow me down, and uh, to give us time to uh, meditate and reflect on some of this. So I'm going to set my timer for five minutes, as I almost always do. And I'm going to ask if you are uh, so inclined to uh, meditate with me. Um, <clears throat> you will recall that I, I'm not meditating just for myself. I'm meditating for and with the entire world. And on that, we take deep breaths. Feel our heart rhythm slowing down.
end as you are ready. If you watch, wish to come back to our mutual center and slip your glasses on if you have to do that. And we will begin. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I want to do a real quick recap to get you focused in on where we are in this conversation about um, the uh, our values. We, we started out by recognizing what everybody recognizes, that the value of our modern day society, the value of breaker society is money. Money trumps everything else. Um, we're willing to sacrifice ourselves, our health, our children. We're willing to sacrifice the entire earth in order to maintain this flow of a fiction that we call money. <clears throat> we've beat that horse to death. We don't have to be talking about that anymore. The thing we need to talk about is if money is not our primary value, then what is our value? You will recall that I talked about um, something that, that I referred to as uh, the coin of the realm. Um, how do, how do we get paid when the, when, when our goal isn't making more money? What is it that pays us? And I came up with a, a, a bunch of, um, ideas and concepts, um, uh, we pay, we get paid with a higher quality of life with more personal development. Uh, with greater security, uh, with greater creativity, having more time, having better relationships. All these things are true. And yes, there's a but. But all these things tend to be the focus of people who are really, really secure in their basics, Things that you know the you know comfortably middle class and above, no real stresses in their lives, and so you can think about what is it that that causes me to become more alive? Um, what is it that um, uh, is our um, you know our our great um, uh, great goal. What's what's? How do I increase my attractiveness? How do I, oh the the, the the current stuff on uh, Facebook right now is how do I get rid of my anxiety? Um, how do I get rid of my trauma? When the majority of the people in the world right now would just like to have really good food to eat and really good really clean water to drink. So our challenge is. Um, how do we get um, how do we get a set of values that is true for us and also true for the majority of the people on the planet? Um, <clears throat> so breakers equal money. Gaians, those of us who are of the, of the nation of Gaia, that our goals are something else. And I'd like to suggest to us that our goals are, should be, and could be, and I'm switching screens here, um, we, we, we've talked about the 12 global challenges, but I think it's time for us to talk about the 12 global visions. How do we take each one of these challenges and turn this into 
a vision. Um, how do we get security for all? How do we get water, good, clean, appropriate water for all? And by appropriate water, I mean not having human beings drinking dirty, polluted water while I wash my car with clean, drinkable water. Um, there's, uh, the, you know, what's appropriate here? Food for all, energy for all, health for all, politics and governance for all, not for um, this group of political elites versus that group of, of political elites. Economics that works for all, not for not just for a limited uh, group of investors. Education that works for all. Habitat that works for all. Housing, not housing for all, but not just housing. The, your entire living environment working for all living beings, not for your car. Ecology for all, where we finally start acting like the entire earth is, part, is, is our family. Media for all, so that we actually have information that we know and that we trust uh, that's available to all beings. And a spiritual cultural reality that works for all without everybody trying to convince everybody that, that my way is the only possible way to express our spirituality, we begin to see the validity of all, of all of these paths and choose the paths that are calling our heart as opposed to somebody telling you, you've got to pray this way because your grandfather did. So once you see, once you get uh, the notion of the 12 global visions, you can start to see that this can start to uh, create the framework for a whole new way of us um, living and working together. I said I was gonna, wasn't going to do this, but it looks like... Um, for some reason, I'm going through this pretty quickly, so it looks like I'm going to do uh, a little more here. Okay. Um, so the goal here is not just for me to have a vision of what works for me or me to have a vision that works for me and my family or even me having a vision that works for me and my neighborhood but all of us together having common visions. Uh, and looking, looking forward to a hundred year future, even, and for those of you who have uh, birthing the nation of Gaia, we're looking at a thousand year future. Looking into a future, how do, how does all, how do all these things add up for us? the most important thing is that for each one of these challenges, for each one of these visions, we have to have respect and reverence for each one. Just because one may be um, closer to my life or one may be further away from how I uh, see things or how I do things, doesn't mean I, I, I should only focus on that. You know that um, for the longest time, people have been focusing on global climate change, global climate change, global climate change. And then they start recognizing like, wait, global climate change is tied directly to economics. Global climate change is tied directly to politics. Global climate change is tied directly to um, you, our habitat, where you live and how you live, we are realizing that 
uh, the cities that we've built are heat sinks. And as it gets hotter and hotter, the cities are going to be getting hotter and hotter. Um, so our challenge is how do we, um, how do we have respect and reverence for each one of these challenges? That no one profits from the continuance of the challenge. Right now, all of the things that are in place in terms of our 12 global challenges, somebody is making money from it. Someone is making money from the existence of uh, the, the multiple militaries that we've got and the existence of the insecurity that we've got. Someone is making money from the insecurity and they're going to want that to continue. Someone is, is making money from how our food gets um, handled or mangled. Okay. Um, all of the crap that's in our food, somebody puts it there. You know, food comes out of the ground pure. If it's edible for us, it's, it's, it's edible until we do things with it that make it inedible. So why don't we just stop doing that? I find it interesting that in uh, Europe, for most of the things that, that um, we are complaining about in our food, they just don't even allow it in their food. Say, no, you can't do that. You want to sell food here? You're not going to put that stuff in there. We don't have people, we don't have the political will to do that because somebody is making money and making money is the most important value. It's more important than your children's lives. We have to have value, have solutions and visions that are based on our values not based on money. Every time there's a global uh, climate change conference, they can never come up with anything that's meaningful because the interests that are sitting around the table do not have the, the environment as their highest value. They have money as their highest value. Our primary value has to be life. Our primary value has to be living beings. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to do farming. We're not going to raise living beings and eat them. It's the only way life perpetuates itself. Life eats life. Life generates more life. And then we eat that life. But we can do that. Remember uh, this part up here. We can do that with respect and reverence for, for life. Um, I think I've talked about the, um, uh, the ritual that the Native Americans, the keepers uh, that are along the Columbia River do uh, when right before the, the salmon harvest season comes up. The first day, the, the, the part of the ritual, part of the, the start of the season is um, to catch one fish and that one fish is prepared in a particular way and everybody from the community, everybody from the tribe eats part of that fish. This is to bond them to the fish and have the fish bonded to them and for them to recognize how important that their very lives depend on this fish. And once they realize that, Human consciousness causes things to expand and grow. And the human consciousness of spending the day in prayer and meditation and chanting and drumming and all around this one fish 
seals the Holonic consciousness of that tribe. It brings it forward where they realize I'm not that important. My children aren't even that important. It's all of us being in a community and being in community with this fish that keeps the, the, the wheel turning so that it really does become all my relations, not just me, not just a leader, not just a fish. Once you do that, that becomes embedded as a, an element of your ecology and it becomes sustainable. Until you do that, you're not, you're not in a situation where you're sustainable. Our solutions have to be community-based. And these are old slides. I'm going to say that our community, that our solutions have to be colony-based. For those of you who have uh, birthing the nation of Gaia, if you've gotten up to chapters four and five now, you know that this notion of human beings forming a colony and forming colonies that, that will be sustainable on the earth for thousands of years. That's our future. And, and those of us who, who, well, I was going to say, those of us who are standing against that, um, well, no one's going to stand against that. Uh, the folks, the, the reason that, that, that it looks that way right now is because the caterpillar is still in control of the media. Until we get a butterfly media, it's going to look that way. And then, then the butterflies are going to look at something completely different and things will be different. So... What I intend to do is go through each one of these elements on the, the, um, the circle, uh, go through each of the 12 and look at them in terms of visions and not look at them in terms of problems. I'm not going to, I'm going to do maybe one or two of them right now. But um, I'm going to set aside a special times for us to uh, do this. And I want to do this uh, in a very interactive way. So it's going to wait until I get back from, um, uh, from my journey and get back uh, probably in, in early September. I'm going to have a, um, a series of... Um, I don't want to call them workshops uh, or trainings. We're figuring this out together. Um, a series of sessions. And those sessions will be going through all of this and we'll go through all of this together. But I'll show you, I'll give you an idea of what we go through uh, right now. So if you just take one of the aspects of these 12 global visions, um, again, this is an old slide. However, I start off by just saying nuclear weapons should be banned. They should be banned as immoral. Now, I think that all war can be banned as, uh, banned as immoral, but especially nuclear weapons, which have no purpose. The only thing that you get with nuclear, nuclear weapons is debt. Um, I, I find it interesting. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Oppenheimer. I, have, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm going to. I've, I've seen several documentaries on uh, Dr. Oppenheimer. And when you look at what a nuclear weapon does... It's only designed to threaten and kill innocent human beings. It's not a military weapon. The only way you can re really use it is on somebody's civilian population. 
why do we have them? We have, we have them because breakers are disassociated from their own civilian populations. Um, they, they talk about you know, how many millions of people you're willing to sacrifice in um, uh, trying to achieve a particular objective. Um, this may sound like it doesn't, it's not the same thing, but it, it, bear with me for a second. I was um, meeting with um, uh, Hugh McCall, who was the person who created the Bank of America. And I was in his office um, uh, some years ago. And uh, we're up on the 60th or 70th um, floor of the building. This was back when it was still North Carolina National Bank. And I was in his office and we were talking about a community I was working in. And he, he, he said, let's you know, go to the window. So we went to the window and we were looking out and down at this community that I worked in. And he's talking about, oh, yes, we could put a, 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 a pond over here and we could straighten this road out over there and it, and I realized for him, at this 70-story view, where everybody just looks like ants, and what I'm looking, I'm looking, it looks like I'm looking down at a map, that these aren't really human beings. He doesn't walk on street level. That's where I walk. And talking about, you know, moving these houses out of the way. These are real human beings with real lives. These are real houses. And the people that we're talking about moving aren't in the room. Just expand that to a global situation and you know, how many um, millions of people dying would be an acceptable loss in a nuclear war. We shouldn't even be be thinking about that. We shouldn't even allow ourselves to think about that. We we should be in a situation where instead of military budgets constantly expanding, they should be constantly shrinking. Military should be repurposed for life enhancing missions. I've talked to you about several life enhancing missions where um, for a fraction of the cost of, of a, um, uh, a, a military operation, a life-giving operation can be done with the same equipment and can um, uh, have a much better result on the ground and in our hearts. Uh, let me give you a really quick example. And I may have given you this example before, so bear with me. Um, but back during the tsunami in the Indian Ocean, um, the aircraft carrier uh, Lincoln was, and its, its uh, task force was in the Indian Ocean at the time. And um, as you know, the, it was devastating for people um, uh, all throughout the region. And the Lincoln decided that it was going to um, make bread and make clean water. Uh, it's a nuclear carrier. It, 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 can, it can desalinate uh, seawater. And um, they decided they were going to bomb Thailand. But instead of bombing them with missiles and, and uh, munitions, they bombed them with water and bread. The, the kitchens in the Lincoln could bake 5,000 loaves of bread a day. Um, aircraft carriers are really big. Uh, and that's without the crew. Go I mean, the crew is still eating fine. 
Uh, so 5,000 loaves of bread, um, thousands of bottles of water. And they took the Apache helicopters that are on the, uh, sh on the ship and had to, they had to take the gun racks out so they could get bread racks in. And they literally just went in and dropped the bread and dropped the water in uh, on these villages. And the people there were amazingly thankful. And the cost... That, um, that we need to do. And my screen, I just went off the off uh, screen. My, my screen just did something that's never done before. So I'm, I'm paying attention here. Um, in, a, in, on, in, in the nation of Gaia, no one should be allowed to profit from selling weapons. No one should be allowed to profit from someone else's death and misery. If people are doing it, they're doing it as a, for a nonprofit basis, and even they're not even doing that. You take the so if money is a driver, you take the driving force out of violence. No one's allowed to profit by selling violence, real or simulated. So there should be a tax on video on violent video games. Um, violence shouldn't be a game. We should teach martial arts in the schools, and we should teach actually we should teach people how to handle guns in schools, so that they know what to do if they see one, and they know it's not a toy. Now, these are the kinds of things we need to think about just in terms of this first bubble of security. And we need to go all the way around the wheel uh, of looking at um, at all of the bubbles. And then the really interesting part gets to comes in when you start looking at fractals, when you start looking at how does security and food relate to each other? Well, if you don't think it doesn't relate, then I think you should be paying attention to what's happening in the Sudan right now. How does habitat relate to ecology? Well, if you're, again, hottest July ever. Um, we need to see how that, how that works out in terms of our, um, uh, how we build our, our cities, how we modify our cities, where we even put cities. Um, I just came across something that was talking about the um, uh, the number of uh, human beings who live in underground cities and have been living in there in underground cities for thousands of years. They knew what to do when it got too hot up there. You come down here. It's not a big deal, okay? It's a big deal if I want to keep making money the way that I've always made it, but it's not a big deal. If you just start asking the question, uh, if the earth has to get hot for say 50 or hundred years or so, how do we have, Oh, let's just go underground. Okay. Um, it's, uh, we have to be able to free our consciousness so that we can think these things and think these things through and think these things through from the point of view of how did we handle this a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, okay? Uh, we don't have to, we, we, we may have to make up some new things, but we may go back to old things. Um, as, I've heard, as I've said uh, before, when it's really hot outside here in Portland, in my hundred-year-old apartment right here, stays cool because they knew how to build apartments. Um, they 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 took uh, temperature uh, seriously when you don't have air conditioning. When air conditioning hadn't been invented then, but, you know, they didn't even have 
electricity back when this building was built. And so, um, so we get to think about um, how do we live our lives and how did we live our lives and how are we going to live our lives? Okay. Uh, I think I told you that I'm not going to, I'm going to be out of town um, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I, we will have a session on Friday. I'm not sure about sessions on uh, the next two weeks coming up. Um, it depends on my circumstances um, and I'll let you know. Um, but we definitely are going to be going, coming back, uh, in September and we're going to have a, a, a different format that will allow us to be able to talk together about these issues, these things. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm designing as fast as I can here. Um, and I'm going to send out a, um, uh, news flyer um about where we're going to be and how we're going to do our sessions if you are um not getting newsletters from me right now you go to commonway.org the website at the bottom of every page it says subscribe and you should subscribe um Okay, I think that's it. Again, we went, went a little long, but I think that it's important to, to cover all this stuff. Um, may all beings be well. May all beings be secure. And may all beings be happy. Thanks a lot. And I hope to see all of you on Friday.